you know, you why see, is that punishment there? Yeah, it's very interesting. It's like we get single girls 29, 30, and then they're looking for guys 35, 36, and they will stipulate single only. Now, obviously, a lot of guys have got married by 30. If marriage hasn't worked out, they're divorced. And then you sometimes have to put it, they wouldn't mind a divorced guy, but their parents are insistent that, no, it should be single. And then we have to sort of educate the parents that, do you think a guy of 35, 36 has well, not been in relationships? And because if what you hadn't been in a relationship with but it would have been something wrong with him. Absolutely. So yeah. what is the purpose of why are you, you know, punishing him just because he's divorced? If he hasn't got, you know, children and he's not in that situation, he's as good as single. So why are you, you know... Do you have yes. clients that are on their second, third, fourth marriages? Uh, occasionally, yes. I mean, we've got the, the 73 old ladies actually come back to us for the third time. Wow. Uh, the, fir the first time she got married, five years later, her marriage didn't work out and she got divorced. Uh, second time she got married through us again and her husband passed away after 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so she's now come back for a third time. Um, but I've got one or two clients who have had, a, you know, a couple. Of, I've got a gentleman who had a, a marriage, a love marriage, which he was with the person five years, got married, and after five years it all finished. Uh, the second marriage was a, a typical arranged marriage. He'd gone to India and, you know, the family were involved. on the wedding day. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very, very quickly, within a month, everything was sort of done and dusted and whatever, and that lasted three months and it, it went. You know, he's now come to us to, to seek help. I'm going to open this up just to whoever wants to jump right in. <coughs> You're seeing an increase in South Asian couples getting divorced more and more Asian couples are falling in love and getting married. So that doesn't really um, guarantee that if you fall in love, the marriage is going to work out for you. Um, it might or it might not. Is it that we are sending out the wrong message to the Asian youths about what marriage actually is? Do you think Bollywood has a, a, plays a part in just romanticizing the whole, you know, the whole business of marriage? Because you speak to the young people, or the younger people, and they'll talk about their wedding day, and marriage is just an afterthought. The thing is that uh, Asians are very much influenced by what they see around them, and there's a much bigger freedom in the Western society. And I think that the younger generation of Asians feel a lot more comfortable with that mm. than what the older generation. Those marriages which are breaking up after 30, 35, 40, and we've just seen somebody after 50 years so wow. has approached us. The fact is that they are now realizing that they have that freedom to walk away from it. Whereas before they felt tied down simply because of the pressures of the families being around them. But because couples are now choosing to live by themselves, they're moving away from joint families and you know, the immediate family around them. Mm. So it's giving them a lot more freedom. And that's really which way we sort of tend to be going. Kuldeep, what do you think? Do you think that these, these uh, marriage bureaus, networking, dating events, are they just completely going to replace your parents getting involved in arranging marriages? Do you think this is what's going to replace the old arranged marriage situation? I think in time things will change. I think people are moving more and more away from the traditional methods of introduction. I think a lot of the elders, perhaps the aunties or the uncles who perhaps may have organised the, the mediation or they may have organised the, the two parties getting together um, don't actually want to get involved now. I think people are moving away from that and I think young people and professionals have got more choice now and a lot of them are standing up to say actually I don't want to go down that traditional route or I've been down that traditional route before and it never worked and I'd like to make the choice for myself as to the the direction I'd like to take in my life rather than being dictated to or thinking oh there's you know why don't you come with us to a family ball or right. there's so and so and so and so but I think there's still the option of people who if they want to go down the traditional route is to take that option because it's again it's about choice and I've got friends who've had uh, arranged marriages and they were happily married um, whereas I mean I personally had an arranged marriage and it's something that I would never ever pursue uh, because, you know, I think it's, again, based on what you've said about the basic foundations. Once the basic foundations are broken, there's no substance left. We have come into society now where, you know, we're all busy with careers, computers, technologies, blackberries, this, that and the other, and emotion has just gone. You know, where is that emotion where you went out for a walk and you held hands or you just had a cuddle? All of that's going now, and even marriage is tr basically becoming a, a transaction of two families or two individuals getting together. And I think we need to remind ourselves, as human beings of Asian background, what the values of marriage actually are and mm, what actually totally is marriage. I totally agree. I think, you know, um, I, th I take my vows once. Never did I ever think that I'd be joining professional networking events mm. or even hosting them as a professional myself. So I think your, your point is key about having the basic foundations. And I think any good marriage, if both parties are at the same level, um, you know, in terms of their value base, I think that's a good start. Right. I would say people from all different backgrounds would do well to re think about what marriage is really about and what's really important. This is true, but I think we are losing it. 
in the definitely. Asian community. Yeah. We, it was a very strong part of family. Um, you know, you had emotions for your children. You wouldn't want to leave them with nannies all day long. You know, there was a lot more closeness for parents. And, and all of that's going because we're busy with our lives. We want to get on, make money and develop ourselves and, you know, establish status. And our children are being picked up by nannies and fed by nannies. And we just say good night, good morning, and that's it. You know, it's so those children shame. have no value. But they don't know who they are. And know, that's what we're losing. A strange thing about all this whole arranged marriage thing. Probably you guys don't know, but actually, if you look back in British history, hmm. English people used yeah. to yeah. have arranged marriages. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. English people had very different kinds of marriages to what some English people have today. And the, the whole system of relationships, it's, it's a global thing. It's not just, you know, happening amongst Asians. But what's happening amongst Asians now happened amongst English people 50 to 100 years ago. And it's, it's, it's a sad trend, I think, you know, all around the world. We've replaced virtue with value. And it, those are false values as well in most cases. Just uh, coming back to Mina real quick. Mina, tell us about the DVD that, you're, that you've um, worked yeah, on. Yeah, we've, um, in Leicester, we've been commissioned by the Princess Trust to actually film a DVD on um, what is a forced marriage and what is honour killings. Um, and it's been produced by young people in Leicester um, and then will be given as an awareness-raising DVD to professionals such as the police, mm. schools, health, social services and local universities as well. Um, but just to make the real distinction, um, a forced marriage is anything that's done under duress. So whether you are mentally or physically being forced into marriage. That would account for a lot of the South Asian marriages. Well, though. this is what I was going to go on to. It's really interesting. We've been talking, you know, listening to this debate about love marriage and arranged marriages. I have a lot of friends that are going through, you know, these, um, these, they go to these dating events and they're being introduced to partners by their parents. And I have a friend who's on the 11th guy. She's gone through 11 guys and she's not chosen any of them. She gets to the 12th guy and her mum says, stop being fussy. You have to marry Disagree him. now, yeah. you know, because... What's the community going to say? And your, your auntie from down the, you know, the street that's introduced you to them She's is saying, to, mm. what's wrong with your daughter? Mm. And, I, and I asked her the question. I says, well, is that an arranged marriage? Is that a forced marriage? And she says, well, I don't think I'm being forced. But she goes, at the same time, I don't think I'm consenting to it. So now what I'm saying to young people is there's this middle ground. There's the real subtle pressures of the parents saying, well, you're 29. You're still going to be left on the shelf. No one's going to want to know you. You know, your body clock's ticking. You're a woman. You want to have children. You know, you've got the career. Why don't you just agree to it? So what do we classify that as then? Well, mm. as well, you said earlier, it's the emotional. It is. It's the emotional blackmail, yeah. which is then indirectly forcing as well. Yeah. We, can, we can do a whole series on just marriages, but it's been really, really insightful. Um, even though, at the end of it, we haven't really quite figured out um, what's the best kind of marriage. Is it one that is kind of arranged through maybe a, a bureau or it's one that you meet, you know, you arrange yourself at a, at a networking event or a speed dating event or it's somebody that you just meet from back home and actually meet them on your wedding day. Um, it's tricky and you can't really say which is more successful than the other. Hope you guys have enjoyed this program as much as I have. We'll be back next time. You've been watching Broken Silence.